All right. We have nine viewers, so. Well, I've got mine up, and I don't see any, anything. Ninety-nine subscribers. Did you press play? There's no play. You're live, I promise. Well, if you can hear me, send us a note so we know that we, you can see us. It says our bit rate is too low. watching but they're not seeing anything Tim says he hears us hears us but can't see us let me pull YouTube up on my phone and make sure we got this Okay, so there's quite a lag, but we see you, we can hear you. Oh, good. Okay. Ah, so this bow that I'm going to do the demo on, at least one of them here, it's a little crooked. And so I want to do a little pre-bending on it so it makes it easier to, uh, to mark out and saw. So we're going to heat it over the flame here for, well, like, count to 50 or 100, depending on how thick it is. I can't really talk and count at the same time, so I'm going to try to think about how long this takes. test it. It needs to be hotter than the, the pain threshold. If you can't hang on to it, it should be about half hot enough, but um, you got to wait for the heat to kind of go deeper into the wood too. Ouch, there we go. Okay. Bend it. Yeah, please feel free to ask questions. Um, be happy to answer anything you got. Spot here to go.
Somebody wants to know what model are you making this bow? So I'm going to make my own model on this. Um, it's inspired by both Tord and Picot. Um, it's uh, maybe with the, the chamfers being a little bit different than either one of them. So, um, and then the, the curve and the graduations of the bows of the bow is going to be more like a tort. So I've got two bows here on the on the bench and I'm going to work on. Um, this stick is the bow that I'm going to make um, throughout this whole week. Um, not sure when and where I got this bow from, probably at an auction. Um, it's got a notation here by um, the previous owner of the stick. It says um, ER June 03. Um, 20 years old so this stick is now what does that make this uh, uh, 37 years old you tip uh, that towards us and then everybody can see and you can see you can see that on there and then they also put a notation here so this bow is um, uh, the specific gravity so that's that's um, how dense the material is is um, 1.08 so it's heavier than water and then it ha also has a notation on here it's some um, uh, modulus of elasticity so that's how stiff it is and that is um, 3.96 so this is a pretty pretty stiff bow so we can we can make probably a very slender but yet still strong and, and uh, supple bow so uh, this is going to be a lot of fun working with this piece of wood. This other piece is really similar. Um, slightly more dense, 1.1. E modulus is exactly the same. A um, little bit different looking wood. This, this wood is a slightly plainer um, than this piece. And... Uh, yeah, anyways, let's get started. So, first thing I do um, is I'm going to um, mark out the um, starting graduations of the stick to um, so that I can saw this out on the bandsaw. So I'm going to start right here behind the head. And I've already checked over this bow to make sure there's no defects or anything that I have to worry about. Um, so any cracks or knots, anything that would sort of get in the way of, uh, of uh, making a healthy bow at the end. So I'm going to start uh, right here behind the head at 7 millimeters. And then I'm going to go at about a 15 millimeter or 15 centimeter uh, distances here. Notice it. I'm saying about. I'm not super being super careful about this part of it. Uh, Nick Walker asked, "How are you measuring MOE?" How am I measuring modulus of elasticity? So the way you would measure that is um, you have um, two pylons that are a a distance apart. Whatever you have a a. Uh, material which is some sort of a homogeneous uh, thickness, the same thickness here and here and here and here. And then you hang a weight um, at the middle point and you measure the deflection with the dial indicator. And um, I have a formula that works out well for 25 inches and uh, hanging a two pound weight and Nick I can send that to you I think I've got that in a PDF I can send that to you 
Um, I don't remember that it's kind of a complicated um, uh, math equation you have to do once you uh, get the numbers on it. Um, but I'm just going to guess. So if this was sitting on the pylons and you did the deflection on this, that this thing barely moves with uh, two pounds on it. Maybe, uh, maybe um, a millimeter at the most. Tiny amount, very tiny amount. So anyways, we'll keep marking this out. So I'm marking this out at, um, I think actually I'm going to go off the bottom of this one because its head's so tall. So we'll, we'll turn it around this way. So I'm going to go at 7 and 8, 9, 10, Eleven. I don't need to mark that even. Eleven. So let's see. From zero. Now I'm going to connect my dots here. Got that marked out, and then I'm going to take my my head template, and I'm going to make sure I got that on the right side of the line. A little bit of a mark there. I'm going to mark this out. So I'm marking the back, the bottom, and then just the length of the head. sense. Can you see that? Okay. So then from here, I would just take this to the bandsaw and bandsaw this out. Maybe I can get Kate to do that while I sit here and keep talking. Maybe we can rough out a couple of bows at the same time. So, yeah, we'll set that aside for now. So once I would take this and and bandsaw it out, and then so I would have, um, so you can see how the head looks, and I have this little taper from about seven millimeters, or it will be seven millimeters when I finish planing it from the back of the head to 11 at the butt of the stick. So I'm going to start by planing it um, at the head. My, Want to check your camera angle here, Kate? See how we're looking. So I'm going to start by um, planing the sides of the head. So I've got my hand wrapped around the the stick at the edge of the bench here, and um, and then the head itself is off of the bench a little bit. And um, my plane. Let's see how I got it cut. So, plane I'm using is this happens to be a record, but it's the same thing as a Stanley nine and a half. Um, I'm using a blade which is um, from uh, Hawk Tools, Ron Hawk out in California, and uh, it's a little bit harder and more durable than um, than the original blades that come with it. And then I keep my the throat of my plane, so where the chips go in, um, as small as I can, because Pernambuco loves to chip out. So um, the last thing you want is for um, the wood to tear, make make little um, cracks that can, um, uh, when you camber the bow, you can actually break the bow because of that. So I keep that really small. So we'll get out of here. A little bit more blade.
this bow is kind of tough. So I'm going to switch over and put a clamp on it here. Kate and I save all of our our shavings and um, uh, Pernambuco was originally imported into Europe uh, from Brazil as a dyeing material and so we give this away to anybody who um, dyes wools or silks you can get really fabulous colors if you got a minute just google the word um, Brazil would dye and you can see all the amazing colors that you can get out of this material so. Cleaning this way is a little risky. If you um, hit the back of the head with your plane, you can break it. Not a good thing. Brian McLaughlin asks, uh, does the angle you are playing at mimic the finish angle of the side of the head or 90 degrees to the top and bottom facets? Um, I'm, I'm uh, starting to put the angle on the side of the head. Um, right now I want to leave uh, this about 11 millimeters and then when I measure here at the width of the top of the head, I measure in the middle of the stick, and I'll show you that in a minute here, and um, and that's going to be my seven millimeter. So yeah, so I am getting a little bit of a of a angle on the side of the head. here. This is going to be too wide. 12-4 and then see I'm measuring here. Can you see that? Um, that's 7-2 so that's almost finished. Okay, so we'll leave that alone for now. 
I'm going to move up the stick here a little bit. As I'm planing, I'm rotating my plane back to that uh, 90 degrees so I can keep the stick square at the butt of the stick. up. Uh, Nick Walker asked, is there a specific bench height that you like that makes planing more comfortable? Um, it's going to depend on your, on your stature. Um, Nick, you're a little taller than I am, I think. Um, you can see my my elbows resting on the table right now um this if i had a separate bench it was just for planing just for roughing out sticks i would want a bench that was maybe 34 inches tall and stand up and plane um, but i don't really have that room in my shop here so um this bench is too low to um to stand and plane at. Some people have a little um, uh, little thing that they've made to just to lay on their bench to stand up and plane. Um, um, I've got along without that for you know a thousand bows or so, so I'm, I'm not going to change at this point. But um, it's all stuff that whatever is comfortable for you, I guess, is the right thing to do. piece of wood must have spent a lot of time either in a basement or in a garage because you can see how the you know like a high humidity situation um, um, oxidizes the wood you can see the difference between here and here how much lighter it is um, but uh, if you put this in the sunlight it'll it'll change to this darker color really within maybe six hours or so pretty rapidly but this dark color takes years to get to that so when you see that you can sort of say okay well in 20 or 30 years that's what that's the color this bow is going to be which is going to be really pretty Model is this bow? Will it be a round stick or an octagonal stick? So this, Elmar and I love you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, so this bow is going to be um, a round bow, and it's going to be my own personal model. Um, my guess is it's going to be um, about. Uh, it's probably going to be about 60 grams with a tinsel wrap on it. And as long as Elmire's watching, oops, 
I just finished up another copy of his Picot bow, which has turned out really, really spectacularly. I'm really thrilled with it. Can you see, does that pearl really show up beautifully here? So, super nice bow. Okay. So over the last week or so, when we were thinking about doing this um, project, um, I saw on the news that um, the Lombardy area of Italy was really, really um, stricken with this uh, COVID-19 virus, and that uh, an organization called Samaritan's Purse, which is a Christian organization that's run by um, Franklin Graham had actually moved one of their mobile hospitals to help out with the situation there. And it's a hospital with uh, 68 beds and it's already full to capacity trying to help the people there. And um, we want to, uh, when this bow is finished, we want to um, have the proceeds of this bow uh, go to Samaritan's Purse to help pay for that um, extraordinary effort that uh, that they're making. I'm I'm, I'm deeply sad by the by the home of the violin. Um, what those folks are going through. Uh, you know, we know people who are over there. We just pray that they're safe. And um, Italy's really hurting right now. Um, I'm sure that we're on our way to be experiencing something similar, but. Uh, um, we just thought that's the least we could do is to, to uh, make this bow and, and um, help with that situation over there. So, we'll keep going here. Randy Morrison asked, how much weight does silver and gold add? I don't really know how much it adds because I don't really make a bow with or without it. Um, the difference between silver and gold might be two or three grams, gold being heavier. Um, remember, we're not using 24 karat gold, which would be significantly heavier. Um, we're just using, I use 14 karat gold. Um, the big difference would be... Um, uh, the difference between a silver winding or a gold winding is, is um, quite a bit. It's actually ridiculously expensive, too. It's over $300 just for the materials for that. So, And I, don't, I generally don't make a whole lot of gold bows. Um, when I look at, uh, I've got a really beautiful old um, Funklaus bow um, a friend of mine owns. The wood in it is so spectacular, and it's just a silver bow. And so often you really see um, a lot of the really great bows we see are silver mounted anyway. So um, anyways, we'll keep going. here.
seven. See how much um, dye is in this wood here. So let's see the yellow here. This is uh, ammonia. <laughs> so, if you ever have the pleasure of doing my laundry, that's the color of the, the material in my armpits of my shirts. <laughs> very, very charming, right? Okay. So, got a little bit more to go down here. doing these measurements along the length of the stick. So this bow that I was uh, doing the measurements on was really crooked and it's just a lot harder to work with doing this stage if it's if it's crooked so and it's going to have to be straightened anyways somewhere in the process so um, it's easier to do it now than later. Okay, keep going here. somewhere. Okay. Now I'm going to take my knife. And put a chamfer on the back of the head here. Very rough. As you get closer to the finished dimensions of the head, the last thing you'd want to have is a big splinter of wood to go across the side of the head. So by doing this, you can hopefully make that less likely to happen. Some wood is more cooperative at doing this with a knife, and others you just have to use a file. Well, the great thing about this is you can always press pause and go back. 
This will, all these videos will be available to watch again after the live stream. At least that's the goal. So long as I don't screw anything up. Okay, clean this up behind the head. Oops. So this is a file called a crossing file. Um, it's, uh, this is uh, made by Grobay and it's a zero cut. So just getting rid of the rough tool, the rough bandsaw marks off of here. I'm not paying too much attention to the final shape at this point. I know some bow makers um, put a lot of time into the head at this point. Um, and uh, getting it much closer to finish. For me, I'd rather break the bow first, if it's going to break, then work on the head, and then break the bow. So, um, not that that's my goal, to break the bow. So, where are we at here with our thickness? What does Mr. Lee say? Don't make break. Don't make break. Oops. What a charming sound. I got it over here somewhere. Yeah, a little paste wax or a little uh, just candle wax to help keep the squeaks away. Got my basic thicknesses down here. Deal with those saw marks later. Okay, so now I'm going to make the bow eight sided, not exactly octagonal or equal octagonal, but. Um, setting up this um, to do this live stream at our uh, learning trade secrets school and uh, why we're doing it we're listening to the press conference of the Ohio governor Mike DeWine and they're saying that the for businesses that are not op that are not supposed to be open non-essential uh, non -essential businesses. businesses they're considering doing a thousand dollar fine and 30 days in jail so we thought it was prudent to just come back home and set this up here. We, we thought we'd have a little bit better internet out there because there's the population density is much lower. So there's fewer people watching Netflix right now out there. Well, hopefully everybody's watching YouTube now. Uh, Tim Pulley said that he wants to make a viola bar. Can you follow along and just add one millimeter to all your measurements and 0.5 millimeters for thickness of the stick? So viola bow is only going to be a half a millimeter bigger in, fin in finished dimensions. So really can make it a little bit bigger, but it's not really that necessary. 
Adam Goldfree is making a cello doll. Good job. Ah, Tyler. I was wondering who T A or who T A A two C was. He's working on a bow too. John Brubaker is working on a violin frog at the moment. These three bottom facets that's super, super important to keep them as perfectly clean and almost polished as you can. Because if the bow's going to crack while you're bending it, that's what's going to do it. So we'll try to avoid that. So question for Ryan, have you got your uh, handles made for your, your new chisels yet? Oh, Ed Shilko is watching. Ooh, hey Ed, how you doing? He said he's uh, working on a baseball. And Matt Wheeling is bending a cello bow. Nick Walker is making pancakes for his kids. There you go. That's the important stuff. I'm a violinist and public school orchestra teacher. This is fascinating. As someone who knows very little about this process, thanks for doing this stream. I, I um, have done a lot of teaching over the years. Um, I think it's I think it's a lot of fun actually doing this and. Uh, um, Tell my friends, I I can't believe I get to get up every day and go out to my shop and make bows, and I get paid to do it. And uh, I wish that for anybody, whatever you do, teaching. I hope to God that you get up every day going, I can't wait to to teach this to these kids or to see what they learn. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's just, it's one of the joys of my life to be able to, to do this and then have, uh, amazing players, um, you know, play these bows, puts a smile on my face every time that I, I get to hear them. Sheila Martin, she's making spaghetti. Uh, Ryan McLaughlin said, no, I'm having my dad turn some for me, but I can't wait to use them. Wrapped in leather this week. Yeah.
getting close here. my secret weapon now. This is one of my little filmmaker's planes here. Just try to make this surface just as clean and free of tear outs as possible. Hi, Claire. Just if you're curious here, so here's one of the shavings off of that plane. And let's measure it here. Point zero four millimeters or uh, one and a half thousandth of an inch thick. So refine. up a little bit here. Sheila asked, are these plane blades at about 35 degrees or something steeper for the little one and the nine and a half? Yeah, this one, the blade combination, so it's 25 degrees um, for the blade angle and then the grind angle is probably probably about 35 degrees so together um, they're about what would that make them uh, you expect me to do math yeah I'm expecting you to do math here yeah I mean this blade is is standing up pretty straight about like that the, the blade angle so it really is it's scraping more than it is um, cutting you can see um, like, like I said before, Pernambuco um, is not the friendliest wood when it comes to, to planing. You guys that get to plane that silly spruce stuff all the time, you're, uh, you've got it easy. Okay, let's do these top two facets. And Broadway said, this is so great, I hope to make it to one of your classes. Love to have you. We have a lot of fun. Pablo Vasquez said, this is awesome. Good to see you, Rodney. Greetings from Fort Wayne. Oh. Well, tell all your friends about this. We're going to be at this all week long. probably do maybe two or three hours today and then just keep going through the week see what we can do Ralph is watching hey Ralph hey I know one of my friends from Taiwan is watching, Kevin. It's way past his bedtime. I think it's probably 1 or 2 o'clock over there, something like that. Anthony 
and he said, go to a class if you can. They are amazing. Thanks, Anthony. We're hoping to have uh, workshops this fall um, rescheduled from earlier this year. Uh, we just got to wait and see what happens. Uh, Brad Hildreth in Cincinnati said, I've been able to continue to come into our shop alone. Section 13A in the line order allows this. If you were ever hassled about being at any trade secrets, you could refer to that. Well, we're set up here now. Thanks for that info. Um, it feels pretty weird to be out there where the school is and where we're the only cars there. Uh, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of surprised that so many people keep coming by the Chinese food restaurant to get food. <laughs> they closed up shop as soon as they heard about what was going on. So they haven't had any deliveries or anything. I miss my egg rolls. Well, they probably have family back home telling them what it's like in China, so they may have a different insight on this than the rest of us. finish roughing this out and then we'll just okay. take a, a few minute break here and then start a new stream and start a new stream so. oh brad said yeah that place was delicious <laughs> said hello thank you very much for sharing your knowledge I enjoy this for sure Brianna Goldberg said just wanted to say hi Rodney and Kate thanks for doing this it's awesome Yep, Brianne took our class a couple of years ago, a couple of classes actually, a lot of fun having her. So I look forward to seeing you again. Okay, I'm going to clean this up a little bit with uh, my little plane here. Charles Johansson. Greetings from Central New Jersey. Yeah. And Owl Song Productions. And hey, Ronnie, Alan, you wine here from Philly. Fascinating. Thank you. Ralph put us on his TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not?
righty then. I think that's got us about as far as we need to go on this. Just trying to get any little tear outs gone so they won't be a problem. Okay, check out the color of the hands. <laughs> Why is one hand darker than the other? That's a good question. Oh, well, you know what? It's probably from the metal on the on the um, on the plane. There you go. So the iron in the plane is what's do, what's doing that. That's 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 impressive. So if you go and you take these hands to the bathroom and you wash your hands with soap, you essentially fix that color in your hands for a couple of days. So the only thing you can do to get this, this color out is to um, wash your hands with uh, lemon juice. And the lemon juice will essentially turns it, instead of the red color, it kind of turns it a yellow color, which is obviously less um, uh, less noticeable on your hands than this color is it it never fails um, my wife Ann always says oh can you go to the store to get something and you know here I am with my dirty hands and there's nothing really not much you can do about it but uh, other thing you need when you're doing making bows is you need tweezers the splinters that you get from this Pernambuco or unpleasant okay let's take a break here how long Kate um like 15, what, 15, 15 minutes, minutes 15 minute okay. break and then we'll get right back at it and we'll go ahead and uh, camber the bow all right we'll be back okay